Hi guys, Bill Wendy here. I hope you're doing very, very well. So today I just want to talk to you about how I feel I got over my derealization, depersonalization, DPDR. How I forgot about it, eventually. So to, to rewind about seven years, um, pretty much all of a sudden I was overwhelmed by the symptoms of derealization or depersonalization, but I had no idea at the time what they were. Um, and it was very terrifying, and I thought I had a brain tumor and all sorts. Everything that could that could be wrong, I thought was wrong. And I'm still here, and the scan showed nothing. And so without meaning to trivialize at all the depth of horror that and hopelessness that derealization, depersonalization, DPDR can induce on people, and indeed do, um, I would like to tell you how I believe I got over it, or changed my relationship to it, at the very least. So as I said, seven years ago, and this lasted for maybe four years straight, of just uh, total hopelessness, um, levels of depression I didn't think possible before that, and I had never gone anywhere near, um, suicidality eventually, and then for quite a long time, just extreme agoraphobia, um, becoming closed and, and shut off and strange around people. And after a long time I started taking Valium for all this and I was living in East London. I had a very stressful job, wasn't in a relationship, didn't like the people I lived with. Um, and they were the ingredients, along with the severe panic about the whole thing, for the zenith of the feeling, for the height of the feeling. Um, which is total chaos and hopelessness and depression. Um, so, for me, I really had to get out of the big city, which was London, uh, because it was so stressful and stimulating and anxiety-inducing and polluted and full of young, attractive women, um, that how can one not be anxious there? The noise alone would, would make, make you anxious and a... I, well, at least until the derealization, depersonalization didn't uh, came along. I could not function as, in London or as a teacher without Valium. I've made lots of videos mentioning that, including my most recent one. And my most popular one, which I made a few years ago. Um, so getting out of London, meeting someone and developing a stable relationship also really helps. I was, I was dating a lot in London. Uh, it was very it was sort of fragmented. Um, I guess it sort of incentivizes that kind of culture when you, especially when you're young and single. Bumble, Tinder, and you know, meet some friends off that, have some fun off that, uh, have some horrible complications off that. Um, whatever you whatever you have had from that, it, it's anxiety inducing. It's exciting as hell going dating all the time, but there's no substance or meaning to it really, and so it's anxiety inducing and you need a few drinks or a few blue tablets or or whatever it is you need there's no stability and someone that you meet and you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with they might choose to stop talking to you the next day and vice versa and you inflict that on someone else and you feel the guilt of that and all of it all of it adds to the broth of unease and general despair and meaninglessness which which are manifested in the derealization, depersonalization experience. It is a bit of a chicken and egg thing. Um, a vicious cycle. Um, also for me, bizarrely, to stop, to stop playing in a band and performing late at night um, seems to really help as well. Because once the burning passion fades a little bit with music or any kind of artistic endeavor that's costing you huge amounts of energy and money. Um, you have to be re as soon as it goes a little bit it becomes a chore and then it becomes a big chore and then it becomes so bad um, or it can do. It goes from being joy to hell and I remember waiting to play some shows being so anxious that that sent me the realization which was already like 8 or 9 out of 10 all the time into 10 out of 10 and beyond and I've just been just feeling so awful and spaced out and before shows and then struggling to do the show and then a bit of a kick afterwards but I'm not sure if it was uh, worth it after, <laughs> after a certain point. So, also, 
getting off the Valium eventually, I feel, has helped. Uh, made it worse at first, but uh, yeah, so after years of taking 20 to 30 milligrams a day of Valium to function as a teacher and musician and the rest of it, wasn't just to lay in bed all day, um, like this, this video. Um, <laughs> so, so it definitely, definitely helped. I remember the first time I took one and feeling almost normal after months of just excruciating hell. It's, it's very hard to describe, I'm sure some of you can relate. Anyway, so I started taking it every day and then became very dependent on it. It was a huge problem and I think after a while the Valium was having diminishing returns and even adding to the derealization, depersonalization uh, effects. So getting off that and not, uh, also the anxiety created by having a habit like that of when you're going to get your next fix and what if you can't get your next fix or what if your next fix is a dodgy batch etc 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 it's very anxiety inducing to have a anti-anxiety medication addiction as I'm sure some of you know so I know many of you who clicked on this video will be in the throes the hell what, what can see in the unending hell of the dissociation, the derealization, the dreaming, of feeling like, like you haven't slept in seven days and that you've drunk 18 cups of coffee. Um, I'm feeling like that all the time and it get really getting you down and you're becoming agoraphobic and and then the, the whole lockdown thing. The lockdown thing sort of catered for reclusive depressives, you know. Um, you have to laugh about the lockdown or else it really is the alternative of crying. Nightly. Uh, at least Matt Hancock is, uh, is gone. So just to sum up guys, I think what really helped my derealization were a stable relationship, um, moving away from London in my case, moving away from a huge city, stopping the fragmented relationship, sort of, sort of regular dating and casual things and trying open things and, and all that. For me it was a matrix of anxiety. Um, and also stopping taking the anti-anxiety medication, which has a huge trap door under it, and has a, is a beautiful whirlpool, as I, as I christened it in my video, Valium Beautiful Whirlpool. Um, I think if you can do all those things, guys, live in a more peaceful place, try and get a stable relationship, worth having a job that you some at all like helps. Um, sometimes I've been able to do that the last year, work in schools, sometimes they've been shut by the government. Um, hopefully that won't happen again, but I don't think I can pass them. And um, the last thing I would say was try and choose your news sources carefully and then try and limit how much news you take in each day. Because anything that triggers anxiety will trigger your derealization. Um, you may also be someone who needs some medication, like a low dose of sertraline, antidepressant, or cytalopram the antidepressant um, can also help just stabilize your mood and reduce the anxiety and, and make it easier to function and get out, get out of bed. Also it's trying to just stick to your own frame of reference. You might say you, you need a medication to someone, an antidepressant, and they send you a link of Michaela Peterson saying like how all medications like bad and how like her ankle is as bad as like being in like Guantanamo and anyway yeah only you know how you feel and only you know what you need with, with some help from your doctor and I will sign out with you'll be okay remember that derealization depersonalization isn't fatal you'll be okay all right playlist below guys bye bye